This is the book Beat Depression by David Hines from 2001. Chapter 46, Massage. I like a man what takes his time. May West, 1892 to 1980. The bottom line, experience the power and importance of touch. Massage has been shown to reduce blood pressure and alleviate sudden types of headache. It has been used effectively in the treatment of depression brought on by trauma. A study at the University of Miami Medical School has demonstrated that depressed patients who received the benefits of a half-hour massage had consistently lower levels of stress hormones during the massage and afterwards. Patients also reported they were able to sleep better. One of the great joys of massage is that you are helpless on the couch with nothing to do. You have little choice but to lie back and let your therapist do with you as he or she wills. Massage releases tension, frees energy, removes physical blocks and feels good. It also brings awareness to the sensory nerves, just what you need when you are feeling depressed. Should you find yourself thinking or worrying about anything during your massage, simply abandon your thoughts and revert to the unparalleled luxury of lying there and being pampered in the name of therapy. In the event that a commercial massage is beyond your budget, or if you would prefer to enjoy the benefits of massage alone at home, I strongly recommend you to treat yourself to the ecstasy of an Indian head massage dispensed with your own two hands. You don't need anyone else to help you to do this. You have the power to melt away pain and relieve stress in your own fingertips. Narendra Mehta, who is totally blind, devised this and other massage techniques in India and brought them to the the West. In his truly brilliant book, Indian Head Massage, Discover the Power of Touch, Thorson's 1999, he recommends the following self-administered method of head massage. Please note... That advice given in this chapter is not suitable for persons suffering from any chronic or acute health problems such as whiplash injuries, migraine, epilepsy, psoriasis or eczema. If in doubt, please consult a doctor or professional therapist. Relax. Sit down comfortably in loosely fitting clothing with both feet on the ground and prepare to experience how a firm rub about the skull can relieve tension and how soothing strokes to the top of the head can give the sensation of lifting depression. Now follow these simple instructions. Gently massage the whole of the area of your scalp with thumbs and fingers, releasing any tension by friction and rubbing. Grasp fistfuls of hair at the roots and tug from side to side, keeping your knuckles very close to the scalp. Squeeze at the temples with the heels of the hands and make slow, wide, circular movements. Look down slightly and massage the back of the neck by squeezing and rolling the muscles. Start at the top of the neck and work your way down, first with one hand and then with the other hand. Repeat this a few times. How do you feel now? Great, isn't it? Why not get into the habit of treating yourself to a head massage more often? You'll sleep more sweetly at night if you do. This is the book Beat Depression by David Hines from 2001. Chapter 47, Sex in Depression. 
The follies that a man regrets most are those which he didn't commit when he had the opportunity. Helen Rowland, 1875 to 1950, A Guide to Men. The bottom line, most women know that sex is good for headaches. Many people live happily without an active sex life. But for others, a satisfying sex life can be an important part of health and well-being. At the moment of climax, your brain waves are being well and truly scrambled, and this enjoyable sensation is not altogether different from the therapeutic benefits that can be derived from a less popular choice of therapy, ECT. Setting yourself a desirable and obtainable purpose in life, together with a realistic target date for its achievement, is therapeutic and may provide the additional benefit of helping you to banish depression from your life sooner rather than later. Chapters 56 and 57 will give you an indication as to how you might set about achieving your goals, including this one. If you don't currently have a partner with whom to share an enjoyable sex life and you would like one, why not make yourself a binding commitment that within, say, 1 to 12 months from now, you will take the necessary steps to find the person of your dreams? In the meantime, let's discuss what sort of sexual problems can arise when you are depressed. Two out of three people who suffer from depression lose interest in sex. It is important to understand that this lack of interest is only temporary and is as much a symptom of depression as feeling low, probably as a result of imbalances in brain chemistry. Reduced sexual activity may also be accompanied by weight loss or gain, reduced energy and disturbed sleep. Other problems of a sexual nature that can occur as a result of depression are difficulty in becoming sexually aroused, reduced sexual performance, realizing less pleasure than usual, reduced energy levels, difficulty in achieving or maintaining an erection, premature ejaculation in men, or not being able to ejaculate. Women may experience a loss of desire, vaginal dryness, which can make sexual intercourse painful, and difficulties in achieving orgasms. Some antidepressants can cause sexual side effects in around 40% of patients. If you should experience such problems, your doctor is the person to talk to. Antidepressants from the latest generation of drugs are less likely to cause the type of sexual side effects described above. Remember, sexual problems are a symptom of depression. If you are missing the sex life you used to have and would like to get it back, this is a sign of impending recovery and an incentive to beat depression by reading on and taking serious note of the advice in this book before translating the advice into action.